we're really rocking and rolling. More supply on the oil side, more supply on the meal side, more demand for the producer soybeans here in the Midwest. Hello and welcome to this edition of the State of Soy. I'm Aaron Putzi and we're traveling the state visiting with soybean farmers as part of the Iowa Soybean Association series of summer meetings. A great time to get out and visit with farmers and also with industry stakeholders that are working directly with farmers to improve their bottom line in the soybean industry. I'm visiting with Reggie Cook. Reggie serves as the Director of Marketing for AGP. And uh, Reggie, these are interesting times, as they say, in, the, in agriculture and in the soybean industry. How would you frame up the state of the soybean industry from your vantage point with AGP? Yeah, I would say the state of soybean industry right now is, for the most part, we're really rocking and rolling. Uh, you look at the demand on fats and oils here the last couple of years, it's really pushed in this, this massive increase in industry crush. You know, you look forward in the industry, we're going to increase crush by roughly 30%. That gives us more supply on the oil side, more supply on the meal side, and in turn, more demand for the producer soybeans here in the Midwest. And that's something that the farmer leadership of Iowa Soybean Association is looking at very closely as we come into increasing supplies of meal. What does that mean from an export standpoint in terms of the U.S. industry's status on the global marketplace? Are we seeing that increased meal starting to come through the pipeline and perhaps making us a bit more competitive in the global marketplace? Yeah, I would say you're already starting to see it. You know, you look into new crop next year, there was a flash sale here on export out of the U.S. just this week. You know, this is earlier than when it typically is. Um, it's, a, it's a larger sale than what you normally see. You know, you look at it from an export standpoint in the U.S., the export traders are going to have to get a little bit more creative on where they go. You know, stuff out of the Gulf, we're going to be able to work that to Central America. It's going to be able to go to Europe. You're going to work it around. Stuff off the P&W will hit Southeast Asia pretty hard as an industry, uh, EGP included with our asset out there on Port of Grace Harbor. But we're just going to end up needing to be a little bit more active in the global market, you know, with the oil base on the backside that's driven this crush increase, it should help us be more competitive in the world market. To a certain extent, oil's kind of got to pay the way. What are some countries that, you know, the Iowa farmer may start hearing just a little bit more as partners like that of AGP really start knocking on some doors and, and perhaps looking to add some market share? Probably no secret Philippines are a big customer of U.S. meal. I think the U.S. as a whole, we have a pretty good relationship with them. We're really going to have to delve a little bit more into the Thailands, the Indonesias, the Vietnams of the world and trade some of that product. The U.S. is potentially going to have to double exports to keep up with the meal supply that we'll have. So it is definitely going to be something we're going to have to be a little bit more creative when yeah. we look at it from a world perspective. With AGP, we're building a brand new plant out in David City, Nebraska. But on the flip side, I hope everybody doesn't lose sight of the fact that all of these plants that we have had and continue to have, we continue to put money back into them, continue to reinvest, make them more efficient, more effective, and keep building up these older plants, basically building them new from the inside out. And lastly, Reggie, what's the one thing that you would would want them to know about AGP and your operations? We're a federated regional cooperative, which ultimately means that we are a co-op made up of co-ops. So when you think about that, at the end of the day, we're ultimately owned by the farmer. The farmer owns the local co-op. Local co-op is a member and owns AGP. So we are very diligent in trying to work money back through into those communities in terms of patronage back to our members which makes it back to the farmer. You know, smaller towns, I do think they're, they're blossoming with, with farming and agriculture. You know, it's a way of life and we love living it. I definitely appreciate all the farmers out there and what they do. We appreciate you, what you do, and, and long partnership with the Iowa Soybean Association. A lot of improvements coming along, a lot of market opportunities coming along for Iowa soybean farmers as we move into a time of additional soybean meal inventories. Reporting for this edition of the State of Soy, I'm Aaron Putsey. Do you remember when you first believed that anything was possible? Do you remember when you had doubt? Obstacles you couldn't overcome? Do you remember?
remember when you push through the pain and refuse to quit. Remember, he created you for this.